guys, tonight we are doing another fractured fairy tale, and we are reading the story, the true story, of the three little pigs, as told by John Sinska. I love how it has the newspaper headline. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll tell you a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf. Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story story. Way back in Once Upon a Tom Tom, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny, and I had a terrible sneezing cold, and I ran out of sugar. So, I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his house, his whole house, out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into somebody's house, so I called, um, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. Well, and that's when my nose started to itch. And I felt sneeze coming on. Well, um, huffed and snuffed and a chew, a chew, a sneeze, a great big sneeze. And do you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig. Dead as a doornail, he had been home the whole time. It seemed a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner just laying there in the straw. So I ate it. Think of it like a cheeseburger, just laying there. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house, and this neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the doorbell to the stick house, and nobody answered. And I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you home? And he yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and sniffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail, wolf's honor. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out there in the open. So I did the only thing there, there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it like a second helping. Now I was getting awful full but my cold was feeling better, and I still didn't have a cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. Now this guy was the first and second little pig's brother, 
and he must have been the brains of the family because he built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house and no answer. And I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear, sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make her a nice card instead of a cake, and that's when I felt my cold coming on. And I huffed and I snuffed and achoo, achoo, I sneezed once more. Then that third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow. But when somebody talks about my granny like that, why go crazy? When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing. And, well, I was making a real scene. Well, the rest, they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the other two pigs that I had had for dinner, and they figured a sick guy going around borrowing a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the whole story about huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me a big bad wolf. And that's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. The end. Poor wolf. He just wanted a cup of sugar the whole time. Do you believe his story? Always two sides to every story, huh? And that was the wolf's. And I will see you tomorrow night. Bye.